Uh, good morning, this is Bruce. Uh, welcome to uh, Fred's shop. Uh, Fred has uh, come up with a novel idea of how to service these, um, uh, the chucks to change his chucks on his Dean Smith and Grace, which is a beautiful piece of machinery at any rate. Um, and he built himself a swing arm and he'll show us how he, uh, how he operates that swing arm, uh, Fred. So it's, uh... Yeah, thanks Bruce. I'm getting far too old for all the heavy lifting. So the swing arm simply comes out this way with a normal chain lock on it, which I've shortened the chains on so that it's easy to operate over a short distance. It's designed so it'll actually run right around the corner onto the, onto the bench. So if I want to, for some reason, put a chuck onto the workbench, I can do that directly from that swing arm. It's also proved very useful for small lifting jobs in the workshop. In terms of the chuck changing, I've mounted my extra chucks onto a rotating. Just swing that back again, Fred. Just a swing it there and swing it there. Yep, okay, that's good. So yep. If I'm, for example, changing this chuck over for the four jaw, I can pick up the three jaw chuck. I can swing this one out here, drop the three jaw with the crane directly into the into this location, the little orange piece stops it from falling forward. Then I can swing this thing back the other way, bring the four jaw into play, take out the safety bar, lock onto the four jaw, pick it up, slide it along the swing arm and set it up onto the spindle without having to do any lifting or pinching your fingers, etc. It also uses a space that I had so far not utilised, one of the few spaces in my workshop that hadn't been utilised. So, that's the latest. That's fantastic, Fred. Maybe we'll go over and have a look at that drill press of yours and see how um, you've set that one up. It's what a bit cluttered got? at the moment, the drill press. That's but, set. Uh, happy to show it to you. Now, this is an old progress, an English progress uh, drill press that... Um, that's been tickled up by, by Fred here, and he's added a few uh, components to it to make it user-friendly. Um, and yeah. we'll have a look here to see. The first component he's got um, is this tray, is it, uh, Fred? It's yeah, I've, it, had a, it had a plate system here with a little tiny piece on it, and I've changed that to a couple of, of wings which have got bearings on them. And the wings will close in out of the way. Now, the whole machine is on rails, so I can move it out of the way when I need to quite Hold on, Fred, I'll go back a bit further. Yeah, go on. So I move the whole thing out of the way quite easily. The same with the milling machine, that'll move along the rail as well. So when I'm doing a, a fabrication job and I need space, I can sort of wheel everything clear. Even the band tool moves out of the way. On the... Uh, On the rail here, let's clear a bit of a spot here, I've got a, a heavy duty hinge with, with heavy dowel pins which is, which is accurately formed that way and you'll see that it's got a, a block which has got a almost like a dove, reverse dovetail taper on it. Yep. So if I want to use the, the drill press for any, any heavy work, I can simply bring this forward and when it's in the right spot, I raise, raise the hinge up into the dovetail and tighten it up with this wing nut. And the wing nut will pull the dovetail tight into that lock position there, which takes all the lateral movement and all the back and forward movement out of the machine. So it effectively makes it a rigid machine locked into that position on the rail. As opposed to having it bolted to the floor. That's right. Um, and the, the wings then just swing straight out. So we've got the one wing here with the yep. plates and screws and bolts and a, and a, um, a, a face plate. It has this uh, and then, then we have, um, rotating table attachment this, that goes on there as well. Yeah, with a rotating table and uh, it's, got, uh, um, it's got a chuck and a little um, positioning unit here which I made in... Uh, Days gone by, and Fred's uh, making use of that. 
Um, this and then you've got these. Out, and it's got a separate piece here for my adapters and various bits and pieces. This this little vice <coughs> sits on there. I've got my keys and things on there. This machine vice, which is pretty heavy, um, I have this on the on the wing here. With a, it's got a locking bolt just there that locates and stops it from being able to fall off. And the handle sits in here. I can lift this part of the table up until it's level with this, swing this across, and then just slide the vice onto it without having to lift it once again. So less trips to the chiropractor, basically. Um, once it's finished with, I just match the table height to this, slide it back, and it's out of the way. When I'm not using it, it can just swing to one side. Swing to one side. Underneath the table on this, I've mounted a flat piece of 8mm plate and that allows me to easily clamp onto the bottom of this wherever I like. If, I'm, if I don't want to use the actual uh, T-slots, I can, I can use straight use clamps. That for, yeah, because most of these cast, cast tables have got uh, all sorts of um, cavities and they're not flat underneath and that, so yeah, you've compensated that by by putting this plate on and um, that's excellent. Yeah. Lovely that's, old machine, this one. Very happy yeah, with it. This is a progress, a four. progress uh, four, 4E made in England from days gone by. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's one that um, I, uh, I received from uh, an old gentleman who could no longer work and had no drive system on it. And Fred also went to the trouble to build a, 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 a drive system for it because it had a, gear, had a gearbox section up the top there and, and he's uh, made, made this plate work um, laser cut and welded and fitted and mounted a motor, a uh, flange jet motor that I had um, and uh, we've wired it up and set it up and this is, um, it's a majestic piece of machinery and it's got um, uh, it's got it's a geared head machine plus plus the V-belt drive, and then it's it, within itself it has um, it has these three speeds uh, feed speeds, and the uh, lovely old nut here that you, you turn it in and that locks the the system into working, um, and the retraction of the quill is done through a chain um, through a chain round a round a pulley, down round another pulley and down through the pedestal and there's a balance weight inside there that, um, that does the retraction. For some reason or other we've never been able to make it um, work 100% um, but then on the other hand it doesn't fly back. So um, it's, it's got a bit of both because when you've got those spring affairs inside uh, here they have a tendency to um, knock people's jaws about if they're um, if they're not uh, not aware of what they're doing. At first so, I was a bit bothered by that but I've actually found the non flyback retractable bit is good because I can actually when I'm setting up I can sit it wherever I want and make my fine tuning adjustments for clamping or whatever and then I can, can use it and the actual spring back hasn't been a problem. Yep. I could always rectify it by putting heavier counterweight in yep. but I don't think I will because I quite like it like this now. But, yeah. yeah, that's right. And these, and these machines are really solid castings and uh, and the quill drive is, is, is quite accurate. Um, it's even got a, a stopper arrangement on it for when you activate. Um, you've got, uh, we've got to turn that. Uh, when, when you activate the auto, auto feed, you can set this adjustable um, arrangement here and fine adjust it and then that that clips out the thing so it's all very simple mechanics uh, that have proven themselves over the years and it's got a hand a hand wheel drive here as well so when you when you lock up the um, you lock up the four bolt the four handle uh, into place then then this this handle drive comes into uh, oh sorry I, I missed that. so the handle drive then comes into um, into action so um, you've got the best of all the worlds here